Bulls Nation, another week down the drain. And we have a lot to talk about with this week. Only two games being played and one win and one loss. At the end of the day, is there much to go off of this week? Well, in my opinion, the answer is yes. So let's talk about the Chicago Bulls weekly in this video. Let's do it. What's up, everybody? It's the Aiden Sports Show, and welcome back to another video. Today, we've got a Chicago Bulls video in relation to the weekly episode of Chicago Bulls Weekly. Now, if you don't know what this episode will incline of, we're going to look at the past games that we've experienced last week and focus on the upcoming games that we have this week for the Chicago Bulls. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below overall how impressive was this week for you and what do you guys think should be expected coming into this next week for the Chicago Bulls at the end of the day the Bulls only played two games this week and uh, unfortunately from that we only came away from this week one and one so of course the Charlotte Hornets game the Chicago Bulls ended that game 123 to 110 in a good Bulls victory and again one of the more impressive victories that we've had all season but then the day after that a back-to-back -back, by the way against the Los Angeles Lakers we fall 101 to 90 an 11 point loss to the LA Lakers that arguably should have been more if, the, if everything went according to plan for the Lakers the Bulls hustled back in that game and made it a respectable loss this is the week the Chicago Bulls have to ha ha had this week this is the week that the Chicago Bulls just finished and unfortunately there's not too much there is not too much but there are things in these games that I would like to discuss first things first the way that we played against the Charlotte Hornets and the Los Angeles Lakers are two completely different teams the ball movement 30 plus assists for the Charlotte Hornets only 18 for the Los Angeles Lakers we limited our turnovers against the Charlotte Hornets we brought it back up to 18 turnovers against the Los Angeles Lakers at the end of the day the Chicago Bulls ball movement was not there the Chicago Bulls defense was not there in the Los Angeles Lakers team and not only that of course the Lakers being a good team they their defense was was fantastic and that is what this week is all about for the Chicago Bulls the Hornets was a great victory it's an expected victory the Charlotte Hornets came into this losing two in a row we expected to win that game and thankfully we did and we did so very convincingly in my opinion we deserved it from the start to the end of the game and we our defense was sensational in that game the Lakers game, now this is a loss that was expected, but this is a loss that can bring a whole new dimension for the Chicago Bulls. These are the teams, and I, once again, I have faith that Billy Donovan will be looking at the Lakers and saying, look at how they communicate, look at how they play defense, look at the way that they are able to get their buckets in a timely manner. How can we add that to our game? And of course, being a good coach, I'm sure Billy Donovan is looking at these things, looking at other teams, finding ways to get their style into our own without changing our style up too much because we have a great offensive style. Defensively, I do think we need to improve. We are one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. Granted, in the last two games, I believe we've given our lowest score. So defensively for the Bulls this week has not been too bad. But overall, we do need to improve in that retrospect. Obviously, the Lakers and the Dallas Mavericks are the two games we've conceded the lowest amount of points as a team. So there's positives in that loss once again. We do still need to improve. Now, let's go into individual performers. Obviously, there are three awards that we give out to the Chicago Bulls players. The disappointment slash must improve player of the week. Then we have, obviously, the sixth man of the week, where we look at the bench specifically and discuss who deserves to have player of the week. And then we have player of the week in general, which is the entire team and who is the player of the week. Now, two games is not a lot to get to base off of. So it's going to be very interesting to see who gets these awards based on these two weeks. But unfortunately, that's just how it rolls. You don't get three, four games in a week sometimes. You only get two. And... If you want to count that Celtics game tomorrow, which I personally do not because this is the perfect time to make this video, then you can add that in for yourself and decide what, who gets what and how the, how, um, the, the rewards will go. 
Firstly, let's kick things off with the must improve player. Now, I'm not naming it this week the disappointment of the week because at the end of the day, the Chicago Bulls had a good week. It had a good game against the Hornets and then very, very bad game against the Lakers where the players didn't perform. So it's very hard to identify one person that must improve. It's hard to identify one person that's had a bad week. So it's going to be difficult to say in hindsight, they must improve. Of course, I did target out Patrick Williams this week for the Chicago Bulls in terms of that Charlotte Hornets game, but he picked things up against the Lakers, so it's hard for me to just say it must be Patrick Williams. And unfortunately, I'm not giving it to Patrick Williams. What I am going to do is, this could be very controversial, I'm going to give the the must improve, he's definitely not been a disappointment, but the must improve player I am going to give to Kobe White. Um, and again, this is two weeks in a row now. I, I love Kobe White. I really, really do. And I feel like this week, it's kind of sad that I'm giving it to him because he's had a decent week. He had 18 points and eight assists in one game and 14 points and four assists in another game. But I just feel like there is a whole lot to his game that just isn't clicking at the moment. And I'm sure Kobe White knows that. Kobe White is a hardworking, hard work ethic player that knows that he needs to work hard to get his touches. He needs to work hard to get better. And he has that mentality. I love Kobe White on this team. I still, till this day, would not trade Kobe White for anybody right now just because of the potential that he has. And of course, the mentorship that he follows. Chris Paul, one of those players that isn't the tallest, isn't the, isn't the quickest, but... He managed to get his buckets in his own way. He managed to contribute in other ways. That's who Kobe White is looking up to. That's who Kobe White knows. And that's who he can turn to for guidance and for um, ways to develop himself and grow. I love Kobe White. Unfortunately, this week, it's just not clicking offensively in terms of scoring. Playmaking, he's not been too bad. He had an eight assist game, which is amazing for him. Then four, uh, four assist game, which is basically an average game for him. So... At the end of the day, there is still a lot, a lot to work on on this team. And he was only just by this much, he was my must improve for this week. Definitely not a disappointment. I love Kobe White. I think he's a great player. And obviously, as a young potential upcoming point guard, I still think he has a lot, a lot of success in his, in his career. So again, it's a patience game for Kobe White. Nothing else to it. I don't really have anybody else to target because I think you could put anybody in this category and you could justify your reason for it the sixth man of the week this one was also difficult but I think it's time I give it to Garrett Temple I am going to give it to Garrett Temple now Garrett Temple last game against the Lakers was was bad and Thaddeus Young was good but how many times have I snubbed Garrett Temple? He had an amazing game against the Charlotte Hornets, and he was definitely better than Thaddeus Young this week in terms of that game. Maybe you give it to Thaddeus Young over consistent games. Thaddeus Young had a better game overall with that Lakers game. He had three steals in that game as well, which is a big positive. But I feel like how many times am I going to snub Garrett Temple? He's been an amazing signing. I do want to give him that award. And once again, I could definitely be wrong for doing that, but I just feel like Garrett Temple deserves this a lot, a little bit more than Thaddeus Young this week, based on every single other week that he's had as well, that I have given this to Thaddeus Young. So, Garrett Temple, in my opinion, a good game and a bad game. Thaddeus Young had two pretty okay games. I think it balances out as Garrett Temple is my uh, sixth man of the week. And the player of the week, uh, it has to be Zach Levine. Zach Levine against the Charlotte Hornets was amazing. was absolutely amazing. And I love that game against the Charlotte Hornets. I thought he was definitely one of the better games I've seen all season. And he didn't drop 40 points. He didn't drop 35 points. And he didn't have too many turnovers in that Hornets game. Obviously, the Lakers game, different story. Lakers game, he had 21 points. I think he only had four assists, but he had seven turnovers. But again, everybody on the, in that team against the Lakers struggled. So just to target Zach Levine as him struggling, I think it's it's a bit of a cop-out. I feel like everybody needs to take responsibility for that Lakers loss. And that Charlotte Hornets victory, he stepped up in a very, very big way. 25 points, 9 assists for Zach Levine. That's the type of uh, stat line I like to see from him consistently. Again, there will be games where he needs to score 30, 40 points. Maybe even 45 in one of the other games that he scored. I think it was the Clippers. He scored 45 points. But... um. Then not every game is going to need to do that. He needs to find that balance, but he's my player of the week. And I don't think there's much competition in that retrospect. Now, with that being said, we've given our awards. Let's move forward. Let's look onwards. The Bulls record is seven and nine. We went one and one this week, as you guys could already tell with the two games. 
Now, what do we have to look forward to for next week? Well, tomorrow we got a game against the Boston Celtics to look forward to. And I'm very, very, very excited about that game. It's going to be very interesting to see what we can come up with against the Boston Celtics. And then we do have a game against the Portland Trailblazers on that Saturday. So once again, only two games to look forward to this week. I do feel like a lot of games that probably should be within this time frame. I do feel like there was another game, but I just quite can't remember who it is against. I'm thinking Memphis. I'm not really sure, but some, I definitely feel like one of those games changed because I don't think we only had two games this week last time I checked. But regardless of that, those are two tough teams. Once again, a tough week for the Chicago Bulls. Boston Celtics, I'm still unsure if Jason Tatum will return tomorrow. There is a good chance that they don't have enough players so once again we need to look wait and see in terms of that how it's going to work out for that Boston Celtics but they beat the Cavs today in a very very good fashion so the Bulls we have Celtics in a back-to-back -back with very few players they're going to be tired the Bulls need to come out energy. We need that energy team. If Daniel Gafford starts, energy. We need energy all the way around the team because we could definitely come at that Celtics we, whether we win or we lose we could definitely come at them and let's see how they respond to that because good teams respond in good ways. Boston Celtics are a good team. They should be able to respond. But if the Bulls come at them, maybe we are too much to handle with a back-to-back -back for the Boston Celtics. And obviously that Portland Trailblazers game, Portland are going to be hungry to come back and beat us after what we did to them. One of the earlier games where the team like Portland gave away a 20-point lead or so and we came back from toughness, from grit and grind and we won that game. So Portland are going to be looking for redemption against us. And I love Damian Lillard. Once again, I have to say Damian Lillard is probably my favorite point guard in the NBA. He is. So, of course, I'm wishing that he doesn't show up against the Chicago Bulls because the Chicago Bulls is my favorite team. But um, we have to wait and see which Damian Lillard, which CJ McCollum show up. They've been very, very good over the past few games in terms of CJ McCollum's been killing it. Dame's doing his thing. We wait and see how that Portland Trailblazers game will go. But that is going to end this video here. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Chicago Bulls Weekly. Please like and subscribe if you're new. And I will see you for the Chicago Bulls versus Boston Celtics game reaction. And hopefully we go to, into that game with a victory. Take care and peace.